Howdy folks, I'm Score, the Crimson Renegade, and welcome back to Final Fantasy VII. I have Barrett set up for this boss, by, uh, boss fight now. The only change I really made as far as gear goes is I put the Talisman on him, which up his spirit by 10, because I'm going to be casting some magic, and I believe the spirit boosts his magic stat. <clears throat> as far as, um, <coughs> excuse me, materia, I put Elemental, Lightning, and Fire on here, on his double AP weapon, just for the AP growth. I have Poison, All. The All is mostly for the AP growth, because it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one fight, so I'm not going to be really multi-targeting. The All is mainly just for the AP growth on the All materia. And I will be using Poison on the enemy, because I believe he's susceptible to it. Uh, restore, in case I need to heal myself. And most importantly, enemy skill with the beta skill that we've learned from the Mid Midgar Zolum. If you uh, had trouble getting beta and you don't have it right now, it's not a big deal. Um... It's just beta would make it a lot easier if you don't have beta. I would recommend having your a level 2 fire materia with Fyra or perhaps even using Ifrit, the Ifrit summon um, here as well. The only reason I would advise the uh, fire materia over Ifrit is unless, you, uh, unless you've leveled up Ifrit more than one level, you'll only be able to summon him once. Whereas you can cast Fyra over and over and over again as long as you have MP. So... <clears throat> this is my setup. I'm going to go uh, enemy skill with beta because I'll be casting beta a lot. I'll probably start. I'm gonna, no, probably I am going to start with um, with big with uh, with uh, uh, big uh, big shot his uh, enemy uh, his li uh, limit break. And as you can see, I put him also in sadness, so he takes less damage from the enemy. I've also put him in the back row to help reduce some damage. Now, I believe the enemy does use long-range weaponry, so that won't make that big of a difference. But any opportunity I have to boost his defense because he'll be by himself, I'm going to take. So, we should be ready to go. So, we're ready to head north now and continue on with the plot. Another reason why I wanted to make sure I did that change so close to there is because once this, once this cutscene begins, you can't change gear or anything. And if you're too far away, when you, if you're too far away from that spot... But when you change gear and set Barrett up for this one-on-one -on -one fight, um, gives a chance you can get into a random battle, and Barrett will be the only one equipped with gear and materia. Cloud and your other party member won't be. So you gotta gotta get as close as possible to that to that map transition, and then make your changes in gear. All right, let's get on with the plot here. And apparently we're in the same clothes. Mm-hmm. So he's gone crazy. Okay. He's got a point there. Marlene. Here's a mention of Marlene again. Wait, what? Dude, you really are fucked up.
Uh, not the way you have in mind, buddy. Alright, and this is the boss fight between Barrett and Dine, a one-on-one -on -one fight. First thing you want to start with, like I said, is you want to start with his uh, Limit Break Big Shot. It'll, do, it'll start with massive damage. Very good. On his next turn, we want to go ahead and use Poison, if it's possible. Bio. And hope that it actually sticks. If not, no big deal. No, it didn't stick. That's okay. We're not going to waste too much time with this. Let's go ahead and use Enemy Skill. Beta. It's going, to, it's going to eat up a lot of MP, but it's going to do a lot of damage to him. Ooh, 557. Very nice. Let's do it again. Enemy skill. Beta. Also putting him in, remember putting him in status also increases his defense more or less. So he'll take less damage even when, no matter whether he's in the front row or back row. 534. And he's out. Two betas and he's done. I probably didn't even need to try to use poison on him. Probably could have saved a, saved a turn to use uh, beta before... Um, using poison. I probably could just use beta twice and take him out without the big shot, but using big shot helps get a good damage early on. Then we got 55 AP, so double that, you got 110 AP, so that's very nice. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> you got a silver armlet for that, and that's it. So, again, that shows just how powerful beta is, and that's why I equipped it early on. I equipped it for this fight. Probably two or three casts of beta. Obviously, at least two casts and a uh, big shot will take Dine out very quickly. This can actually be a pretty tough fight if you don't uh, prepare properly. Oh, wait a minute. Well, hmm. Okay, he already survived a really long fall. Let's make him think he wouldn't survive that one, too. But, storyline convenience, I'm sure. You know, you take a moment to think about this. you got to kind of feel bad for Barrett. Because of all the people in the game that we know so far, Barrett's lost the most, pe most uh, friends and family. We know he lost his wife to the uh, attack on Corel because he mentioned that. <clears throat> I, I assume they didn't have any kids yet because Marlene is the only child we talk about. Dying kills himself here. He loses his three Avalanche members, Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge, in Midgar. That's five right there. He probably isn't happy with the fact that most of uh, Corel hate him for what happened in uh, uh, well, with blaming him for the... Uh, uh, destruction of the town. So you gotta kind of feel bad for Barrett. Shit just happens all around him. After the battle, we immediately come back here to Mr. Coates' little truck. This is why I came here to talk to him first, because if you didn't know that this guy was here, 
and you didn't talk to him before going to to deal with dying, you'd probably be like, who is this guy? Where is this place? So I wanted to show that off first. Obviously, the boss was dying. It was pretty pretty self-explanatory. I would shut up if I were you. Right, we already knew about that. Oh, great. I wonder who the base is going to be. Yuffie? No. Tifa? No. Eric? No, not Eris. Red, I'm not even going to try to try to think about him on Chocobo. That'd be too funny. Barrett? Poor Chocobo would probably collapse under his weight. So who's le- Oh. Right. Our number one volunteer. <laughs> I was like, whatever, fine. <laughs> That is kind of mean. Alright. Cloud and Esther is now going to go up the elevator to uh, the upper, back up to the uh, gold saucer. She's going to give us information about how to uh, uh, ride a chocobo, but I already know how to do it. I know all the buttons and everything. But there's going to be one button they don't teach you about. So first of all, I'm going to say not interested so we can avoid a long tutorial conversation. And just continue on with the plot here. Oh, that was a nice awkward stare from everybody. Mm-hmm. Now, he, this isn't uh, just some random NPC. He actually is one of the uh, riders in one of the higher classes of Chocobos. And if I understand, I haven't actually done the entire Chocobo races all the way through to the top ranks. But from what I understand, as you get to the higher ranks, uh, once you reach like among the highest rank, if not close to it, no matter how fast or how good your chocobo is, his will always be just a little bit better. Therefore, he will always be, you know, your your biggest competitor when trying to complete the highest ranks of chocobo racing. Again, this is just from what I've read and what I understand. I haven't experienced it myself. Oh, good, more awkward stares. Alright, there's nothing we can do now for a few moments, so we're going to just wander around here like an idiot. We're going to go over here to this corner, to this little red, <clears throat> red rock, and pick up the Rama Materia. We now have our Thunder, our Lightning Materia. All right, once Esther leaves the room, you get a, uh, wait till the race will start in a few moments, blah, blah, blah. The four uh, jockeys over here will get up and leave the room. 
Once the four of them leave, after a moment, Mister will return. Take your time, guys. Just recording here. No hurry at all. Here comes Esther. Alright. Now we can talk to her and once we do it'll actually begin the Chocobo race. Uh, you get an opportunity to look over the uh, commands again with her if you want. She'll, she'll go over them with you again. Um, uh, what you have to do is you literally have to win the race. This isn't like what we did a couple episodes back when we just watched the race. We were hoping for two, two uh, Chocobos to make the top two in the, in the ranks. That's not how this works. We actually are going to be riding the Chocobo. We are going to be controlling the Chocobo. And we have to win the race. We have to come in first. We can't come in second. It does, that won't do us. We have to get in, come in first place in order to um, escape the Corral Prison. Um, if you don't win, it's not a big deal. It's not a game over. You'll come back into this room and pretty much repeat the process over and over again with the jockeys leaving the room and Esther coming in and repeating that over and over and over again. Not the conversation with Joe when we first got here. That's, that's not going to happen. But uh, just the the, jo the chocobos, the jockeys leaving, and Esther coming in over and over and over again until you actually win the race. <clears throat> uh, so real quick, before I actually get this started, I want to check my notes real quick on something, and I'll be right back. <sighs> All right, I'm back. I apologize for a little break. I needed to check out, like I said, I need to check on some of my notes. So uh, what do you need to do now? When you go ahead and talk to Esther and get the thing underway, she'll give you one more opportunity to um, check out the. Uh, Controls, if you say, uh, how was it again? So go over the controls again. But I'm going to say, yeah, I got it. So I'm going to show you how we're going to do it. So say, good luck. Here we go. First thing you want to do is you want to change from automatic sequence to manual operation. And then you want to hold the target button and page up button to restore your stamina. Now you see my stamina bar, which is the red bar on the left. I'm going to boost. You see how it depletes. If you hold target and page up, it re restores your stamina bar. It's kind of a cheat, uh, kind of a cheat command that uh, they don't really tell you about. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold st uh, target and page up and the uh, boost button. That way I, boot, I can boost as much as I want and still get some of my stamina back. So I'm going to try to boost ahead of this, guy, of this other racer up here, I hope. And it's going to cross the finish line in time. Alright, I'm going to let off the boost a second so I get some of my stamina back so I don't go tired before I get to the end of the line. And we're going to boost again. I have just enough to get to the finish line first place. And there we go. That's how it works. You hold the... Uh, you don't have to use it. You don't have to use the target page up thing, but it really does help um, because you can. I actually have beaten this race before without needing the uh, the the. the I, I guess you can say it's a cheat, but I mean, it's a, it's something I, I I've read places that it's, some people call it a cheat. Some call it just a, a a command they don't tell you about, which I guess technically would be a cheat code. But anyway. Uh, you can actually beat the race without using the target page up thing to restore your stamina, but it really, really helps, especially if you're struggling with uh, with this chocobo race because you can't control uh, the stamina and top speed of the chocobos that Esther gives you. Whereas later on in the game, I'm sure this isn't spoilers, um, you can get you can get your own chocobos, bring them in here to race, and then you can con you still be able to use the target page up button if you wanted to. But you still be able to control which chocobo you put into the race, so you put in the best possible chocobo that you have because of you've, we've been working on its speed and stamina. And I'll probably go over all that much later on. But now that we've actually won, first time through, yay for us, we're home free as she says. If you, like I said, if you fail to um, win the chocobo race for whatever reason, all that would happen is you'd come back here. Uh, Esther said, I'll get you to chocobo, she'll disappear. It'll, it'll call the racers, the four at the table will disappear, Esther will come back, talk to her again, race starts, and that bosses will just repeat over and over again until you actually win the race. And Dio gives us a letter. We get a gift, huh? Alright, what is this gift? A uh, cell phone? No, it's actually the PHS. That's Ares calling on the PHS. <laughs> Dropped off a buggy. Okay. Now we can cross deserts and rivers. Awesome. And this will be very good for for doing some things uh, before we actually move on with the plot. So, letter continues. Oh. Mm-hmm. 
He was heading south toward Gongaga. All right. All right, and we're done. Now, you want to make sure... Remember that Rama material that I showed you that was up in this little corner here? That is the only time you'll have the opportunity to get this from someone. You will not be able to come back here and get it again. So make sure that if you didn't get it, make sure you lose the race if you want to get that material so you can come back into this room and get it again. Otherwise, once you talk to Esther and you win the race, you can't come back and get that material. So either get it now before you talk to Esther and start racing, or if you forgot it, like say you just you realize, oh, I had to get the wrong material in the middle of the race, go ahead and, and lose the race on purpose. Otherwise, you'll not be able to get that wrong material. All right, we get our party members here. I'm just going to go ahead and go with what we've got right now because I don't really care at this point. I'm going to be doing some changing of party members and equipment and setup and all that stuff because we're not continuing on the plot just yet. Now that we have the manipulate materia, we can actually get some limit skills. Limit break, uh, limit. Uh, I keep saying that backwards. We can now get some enemy skills that we couldn't get before because they were enemy skills that the enemies would only cast on themselves. So. We are now going to be doing this. So for now, I'll just stick with these three and move on. There's the buggy. How to drive the buggy. It's okay to get on, cancel to get off. You know, we can cross rivers and deserts, shallow rivers and deserts. And basically, the difference between this vehicle and being on foot is that we can literally just cross deserts and deserts and deserts. Rivers and deserts. <laughs> um, we can still be, we can still encounter random battles while in the, while in the buggy. Um, it can't the buggy itself can't be damaged, but if the three the your three party members die, obviously it's game over. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, rearrange my party, um, <clears throat> get my party members set up for the way I want as far as um, getting getting ready to get some enemy skills. Once I've done that, I will I'll do all that off screen, and then we will go get some new enemy skills in the next episode of Final Fantasy VII. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and thanks so much for watching. I'm Scorn, the Crimson Renegade. I'll see you later.